What's up, you guys? I'm here with a new video today. Uh, first video of 2017. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, I want to start it off big uh, this year with what I feel are the top 10 decks of this current format. Now, we do not have a ban list yet. However, I feel like in the next month or so, we will be getting a ban list and it will probably impact this list. So, this is just a, like a jumping off point to start the year, uh, to start the new year of where we currently are in the game. The 10, the 10 probably most played decks, the decks that you'll see the most the decks that will change over time will get better over time or will die out over the format so this is the order i put them in now you can you know you say what you want i probably didn't get the order 100 percent right there are some decks i'm a little uncertain on there are some that i know that are better than others it just really depends so we're gonna get into it real quick i felt that these decks were the most represented so i'll start with uh, number 10 i put blue eyes now blue eyes was such a heavy hitter when it came out the deck was very strong you know having alternative having you know access to even the vanilla blue eyes being able to make rank eights and being able to make uh spirit dragon everything was very powerful when it first came out however the deck has just lost a lot of steam it's not that it's lost any cards it's just not been a popular pick by a lot of people i feel that that sucks because i feel spirit dragon is a very very good card it does completely hinder the pendulum mechanic and i feel that that's huge and i feel like if more people played blue eyes like you would see it would see a lot more success than it's seeing right now but i feel like other decks have just knocked it out of contention so i still wanted to leave it here on the list because i feel it's still a deck that's going to be represented but I don't feel that it's going to be as represented as it once was it definitely has taken a hit in uh, people playing it but I feel that there are still people that are loyal to the deck and that will continue to play it so I had to put it as number 10 uh, number nine I put Dark Lords now you guys know I'm playing Dark Lords myself so you probably wonder why I'd put them so low on the list. Well, Dark Lords are just kind of like a faster version of Blue Eyes, in, in all honesty. like The whole point of the deck is to draw through your deck till you're satisfied with what you have and put up a big board or just slap a Vanity's Fiend on the board. Now, while the deck um, does have a lot of draw power, it has a lot of search power, it can be very bricky. It can brick a lot. And I feel like as powerful as the deck is, it does lose hard to cards like Raigeki. It loses hard to board wipes. It almost auto loses to Vanity's Emptiness if you're not maining it out. So I feel that the deck does have some work um it still needs some work also i feel like terra top is probably getting hit on the list and the terra top engine is super crucial for the dark lord deck and i feel like if they do hit that the dark lords are going to be kind of they're going to be a lot harder to play it fixed the consistency issues and if uh dark lord, if uh, terra top does get hit to one we're going to have to find a new way to play dark lords and if we're playing a bunch of big monsters and draw cards like we can brick a lot so hopefully there will be another engine we can put in if terra top does get hit uh, so that's what i put for number nine for number eight I didn't want to put it this low because I really do love Infernoids, but I put Infernoids only because we do not know the future, like we don't know what the list will bring. I feel like Infernoids, as soon as Lawn Mowing comes out, is going to be insane. I picked up all my Infernoid stuff. I feel like the ability to just mill a majority of your deck and then summon these behemoths is insane. The ability to search a Decatron, summon three Decatrons, and turn it into an Anoku, a Deviati, and something else to like negate whatever you want and then like basically win the next turn is just insane. So I feel that the deck will definitely be a powerhouse i just really want to see what people do with it uh once lawn mowing comes out and once um we know our list so i definitely put infernoids in the top 10 now like i said for this top 10 the order probably is not correct uh, you can feel any way you know you want to uh, you know in the comments below if there's any way you want to rearrange it please do leave a list down below for me these are just the decks i feel that are represented if i missed any be sure to let me know Next, I put DDDs. Unfortunately, I know nothing about DDDs except that they do a lot of crazy things. They're getting a structure deck at the end of this month, so I had to put them in the top 10 because I feel that they are definitely going to be a powerhouse, and I feel like people who've been playing DDDs are already prepared. People who have never played against them are not going to be prepared, and I feel that the surprise factor, even though it'll be a structure deck, I feel that with people's uh, not having enough knowledge about DV DDDs, I feel that they'll definitely have a uh, impact on the format. So I had to put them in the top 10 for sure. Now the rest of these decks are all tried and true. Like the rest of them are pretty straightforward. These first four were just kind of, you know, this is what I feel like will happen. But these next ones are pretty self-explanatory. Next I put heroes, that's tree toad heroes, whatever you want to call it. I feel Dark Law is in still insane. It just completely destroys some decks to where you can't even play Yu-Gi-Oh. A one-sided Macrocosmos, the ability to make Tree Toad is insane. Being able to open Tree Toad, Bahamut, Dark Law is just unreal. Um, I put it, I mean, you, I guess you could say this is kind of low for heroes. I feel like it's definitely in the top 10. Like I said, you can rearrange it if you feel it's in the top five. I'm just going by based on like the statistics. I've just seen people having more success with other decks. Uh, but I definitely put heroes in there because I feel that, that deck is definitely still amazing and will continue to be amazing in the upcoming format. Uh, next, I put Mermail. Now, I put Mermail over Hero because 
because Mermail has one job and one job only, and it's called Kill You. It's called, I can actually go second and kill you with this deck because Megalo discarding stuff and Prince is just insane. I put this higher because I've seen a lot more people picking up Mermails for the fact that it's a pretty easy deck to play. It's pretty linear, and it does basically just win the game when it, you know, when it clears your board and then just kills you. So I feel like Mermails is definitely a deck that people are very aware of and they know that it's you know it's still around and when you play against it a lot of times you're not prepared so i feel mermail is definitely up there in the top five like i'd find it hard to not include it in the top five because the deck has had a lot of success recently it's topped a lot it's won uh regionals and stuff it's done really really well and i feel that as long as Prince is a card, it's going to continue to do well. And as long as people keep incorporating the frogs into the list, they're going to be able to play double Bahamut, double Tree Toad, and it's just, it's utterly insane. So the deck can go first or second. So I felt that it definitely deserves a top five spot. So yeah, so Mermail is next on my list. Next, I'm going to ABCs. Now, we don't know the future of what the ban list will do. As you guys saw in OCG, the ban list did hit Hangar to 1. The deck would not be dead with Hangar at 1. They would just have to find other ways to play. They'd probably have to play the Empowerment build, and they would have to, you know, of course, of course, still max out on Terraformings, and then probably just replace with two Empowerments or something, uh, just to up the consistency to keep drawing till you get to that one Hangar, the one valuable Hangar. I don't really know if that's what's going to happen here in TCG, but if they do hit Hangar to 1, it will hinder the deck, but the deck will still be played. Buster Dragon is still an amazing card. The deck is the, the deck is very good. The deck is very simple. It's very good at what it does too. So I felt that it's definitely in the top five. Um, as you guys have seen, like the deck fell out of contention in the OCG, but I feel like here in the TCG, until we get everything that OCG has, ABC will still be represented until like Hangar gets hit or something worse happens. So yeah, I definitely feel the deck is definitely in the top five. Uh, next, I have Metal Foes. I can't deny this deck is insane. I can't deny that this deck is very good at what it does, and that the deck is extremely consistent. I feel when a deck is as consistent as this, it's definitely worth putting in the top easily top three top five of um any top 10 list because you play 15 i believe it's 15 metal foes so you always open hands of metal foes you play kieran i feel that kieran is just so powerful like any deck that can play it is just you know so far ahead of the curve and metal foes is the deck that does it best playing rabbit playing all the stuff they play i feel the deck's really really strong you can also play the ariande build to play um to play a um, counter trap so i feel that that's also really important too you can go the tzulkin way there's many ways you can play metal foes i feel that the deck has definitely earned its spot in the top three very very well put together deck very consistent and even though i'm not a fan of pendulums i'll definitely give it up to this deck i've taken quite a beating by this deck several times and i can see why it's definitely one of the best decks of the format next i got paleozoics now people will say paleozoics is trash as soon as we get the new necro valley well we don't have it and we don't know if we're even getting it so i'm gonna knock that right out of the window paleozoic in my opinion honestly would probably be my number one pick if the next last deck wasn't coming out i feel paleozoics are just insane at what they do the deck plays like a trap deck and then it just plays like a combo deck right after and it's just insane and it just controls the entire game i feel that decks that can play multiple karma cuts can play all these crazy things and then slap multiple tr uh, toads on the fr uh, on the field and play open binia and search whatever they need and activate traps from hand and just control the entire tempo of the game is just insane i feel like the fact that they can chain off each other's traps is crazy and that you're constantly 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 having monsters on the board uh, the deck is very very good at what it does and as we all know totally awesome is basically a, a logia so being being able to have two or three logias in a turn is just utterly insane and i feel that the deck is definitely fantastic and if necro valley does come over here and hinders the deck people will still try to play the deck i feel that it definitely has earned its spot as what would be probably the number one deck of the format had the last deck not be coming out but nonetheless it's got the number two spot and finally to the one we all know dun, 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 we all knew this was coming but zodiac zodiac beasts are going to take over the format if you are not familiar with ocg um every deck in ocg is playing zodiacs Every single deck that can possibly play it is playing him. Yeah, there's Zodiac Noids, there's Zodiac Lightshorn, there's Zodiac Bees, there's Zodiac Kaiju, you name it, they're playing Zodiacs in it. And the main culprit is this card right here, Zodiac Beast Molmarat. When it's summoned, you can it's a foolish burial. You can detach and special summon a Zodiac uh, Molmarat from your hand or deck. That's utterly insane. Uh, I really feel that 
this deck is really going to take people by surprise if they're not familiar with it. Once Molmarat comes here and it's incorporated into multiple decks or it's just played in pure, it's going to be utterly insane. Uh, this is going to be a very interesting format. We don't know how long this format will last. Now, granted, the DDD structure deck comes out first at the end of the month. And then before, right before Seattle, we have Zodiacs uh, being released. We're having a case tourney and where there's a regional uh, that same weekend that they're being released. So it'll be interesting to see if anyone is actually able to pick them all up in time and actually play the deck. So I really look forward to seeing that. But I definitely feel that Zodiacs will definitely take over the format as the number one deck. Um, so yeah, well, let me know what you guys think. Do you think I covered all bases? here in the top 10 did i forget decks i'm sure i did is there some decks you don't agree with do you feel some decks deserve to be higher like i said this list is just something i formulated and i don't know how accurate it is uh, I do know that a lot of these decks are definitely, without a doubt, the top 10 decks. The order might be a little off. If it is, let me know what you guys think and why. Um, are you guys excited for this new format? I am. I feel like playing the decks I'm playing, like Dark Lords, uh, Minerva, all these other decks, that they can go head-to-head -head with pretty much anything and be successful. So that's why I'm excited for this format. I can't wait to see what's going to happen. I feel like... Um, you know, I feel like it's going to be a, like a fresh start with all these different decks. And hopefully, if Zodiacs do take over the format, hopefully they don't knock every other deck out of contention. Because I really want to play Infernoids and I want to play some other decks. So hopefully, um, we see a nice diverse format. Or at least a format where there's multiple decks. Because any format where there's multiple decks, I feel it's a healthy format. Because there's more decks being played. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. If you guys enjoyed the video, please smash that like button. Uh, welcome to 2017. I got a lot more videos coming. I'm going to be a lot more active this year. Um, so I can't wait. I, I thank you all of you that have stayed subscribed over the years and have, you know, just kind of just riding through this crazy roller coaster with me. Uh, in the new year, it's going to be a lot more positive, a lot more Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm going to be going to hell of a lot more events, so I can't wait for that. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to smash that like button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.